Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day off with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm very excited about my first guest this morning. He is one of the most experienced and professionally recognized psychologists here in the Keys. He has over 30 years of expertise in a wide range of mental health matters. Now, we're going to spend some time this morning discussing the common colds of mental health, depression, and anxiety. Hopefully no one has ever told you you have to live the rest of your life with depression and anxiety because it's not true. You can get your life back and we're going to spend some time this morning talking about treatment options along with just taking some time to discuss the two problems. Dr. Stephen, thank you so much for being with me this morning. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Now could we, you start by telling our viewers, just give us a definition of what exactly anxiety is. Well, anxiety is, um, uh, as Janice said, one of the common colds of being a human being. In some sense, it is essentially um, inherent to the nature of being human. Um, I say that because we all get afraid, and that's what anxiety is, is fear. Um, sometimes fear is appropriate. Sometimes it's not. When it's not, and it causes problems in our lives, then we start talking about it being an anxiety disorder. Okay, and now what about, let's talk a little bit about depression. What exactly is clinical depression? Clinical depression is not the same thing as just feeling bad for the afternoon. Um, everybody has times when they feel sad for a few hours or they feel bored or disinterested, and that can go on for a minute or an hour or even a day. But when you start feeling really low for long periods of time, by that I mean weeks or months, then we start talking about clinical depression. Now, what do we mean by feeling low? It's not just a question of feeling weepy when you think about the boyfriend or girlfriend you lost in high school. It's about feeling as if you have no hope, feeling as if you are disinterested in the world. Um, people who are depressed commonly uh, report being sad all the time. They cry fairly frequently. Um, and. Um, uh, they're not interested in the things that used to interest them. Um, but that's the mild form of depression. Okay. Um, there are more severe forms of depression as well. Okay. And now how common are these two problems? Um, the answer is they're common as dirt. Um, at any given time, about 15% of the population is diagnosable with anxiety or depression. So that means that if you're in a room with 10 other people <coughs> and um, you're the one that's depressed, there's probably another one in the room that's also depressed or anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, so it's a pretty common disorder. Okay. Now you've had a lot of experience. Obviously I mentioned you have over 30 years of expertise in a wide range of mental health matters including depression and anxiety. How many clients have you treated who have had these problems? Oh, thousands. <laughs> thousands, mm -hmm. yeah. I stopped, uh, I stopped counting my patients when I got to 5,000. Yeah. Um, but I've, uh, this pr these kinds of problems are so common. Um, I work with people who suffer from anxiety or depression essentially every day of my life. Mm -hmm. And now what do you do to help them get past this? Well, again, it depends on the kind of anxiety or depression they've got. I mean, in, very general, uh, in a very general way, Anxiety and depression can be treated with um, psychotherapy, which involves talking therapy, uh, much like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, or it can involve medications, and uh, sometimes we recommend medication used for other people. Um, and uh, sometimes we use a combination of both. Um, with depression in particular, what the research suggests is that um, antidepressant medication and psychotherapy are more effective than either one alone. Um, uh, the more severe the depression is, the more likely antidepressants are to work. The less severe that the depression is, the more likely that the depression will respond to antidepressants as if it were a placebo, essentially. You could give people sugar pills and they'd feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, people with really severe depression can have their lives saved taking antidepressant medication. Psychotherapy is just as effective as antidepressants, but it tends to take a little bit longer to work. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we sometimes combine both to help people feel better faster. Okay. Now, anti-anxiety drugs are a whole different story. 
Um, Anti-anxiety drugs are what people commonly call tranquilizers. Mm -hmm. um, that's drugs like Ativan, um, Valium, things of that nature. They fall into a class of medications called benzodiazepines. <clears throat> and um, antidepressant drugs, on the one hand, are, are really relatively safe medications. Um, anxiolytics, which are drugs that combat anxiety, those drugs um, have several problems. One of them is that they're habituating, mm -hmm. which means that the more you take of them, the more you have to increase the dose to get the same effect. Okay. <laughs> and in addition, they are eventually, in many people, addictive which means they develop a psychological and or physiological addiction to the medication. Okay. So they're a little now, bit more dangerous. More dangerous, okay, and I'm sorry that I have to stop you, but we have to take a Feel quick free. break right now. But we're gonna be right back after these messages and talk further, okay? Stay with us, everyone.